Today I'm going to share with you five tips for using stamps and coordinating dies and we're going to make two cards. Welcome back. It's time to take two with Therese at Alter New and I've got these two cards I'm going to be sharing with you using the Fragile Foliage Stamp and Coordinating Die Set. I thought it would be a great opportunity to share some tips for using coordinating dies and stamps because there's a couple of great techniques that you can do as well. So starting with a tip number one, it can be very difficult to la line up such a fine stamp set and coordinating die. I have die cut the image, that's the small and the large image from some white cardstock and put it in my misty tool. So now I can just lie this stamp over each of the areas that's already been die cut and pick it up on the lid of the misty. And I'm going to do that for both of the stamps and that way I can actually do a practice stamp here and see how it's going to stamp out so I can always move the stamp if I need to adjust it at all. But when it has such a fine stem on it this is a really great way of making sure that your stamps are going to be um, stamped evenly over the die cut. And I do have another tip a little bit later on so hold on to that a bonus tip on how another way to line up fine stamps. The other thing that this is great for this misty tool and having a pre-cut template of the die cuts is for multiple stamping and that's tip number two. So what I've done here is I've done multiple die cuts of some navy blue cardstock from Alta New and I want to do some heat embossing on these and by having these pre-cut templates I can just simply do a stack of die cuts. You can do this with any of your coordinating stamps. If you want to create multiples of an image it's much easier than trying to line each one up as you go. So I've decided I was going to do it in gold but I've decided to do it in white. <laughs> because <laughs> you know things change along the way and what I've got here is a little piece of cardstock that I've added some glue tape to and I can temporarily adhere my die cut to this because it's such a fine die cut I can use that kind of as a handle while I'm heat setting the white heat <laughs> while I'm heat setting the white embossing powder on the cardstock I did prep my cardstock while it was in the misty with a powder tool because it's a, such a dark color it would show any strays of embossing powder but it is a really busy image so it's quite forgiving in that respect and I'm only showing you the making of one of these but I did do quite a few for my card. Alright so onto the sentiment now I have used the bold thanks die set and I've cut the base piece out of some vellum cardstock and the actual thanks word out of some white Nina white uh, 110 pound and I'm using some liquid glue just to adhere that together. But I want to give this a few minutes to dry while I'm assembling the rest of my card and the nice thing about these bold letters it means that I'm still going to be able to pop this sentiment up on the front of my card even though it's got the vellum behind it you're not going to be able to see the tape. And that brings me on to tip number three which is actually a technique. So with coordinating dies and stamps you can create a faux embossed background. So I've die cut all of my images and heat embossed them already and now I'm just working out where I want them on the front of my card. I'm adding some glue tape here. I find this is very forgiving because I can actually move things around a little bit. I don't have to worry about glue seeping out the edges and because it's a dotted glue, glue tape it actually works well on those little intricate areas of the die cut as well. And to make sure that my die cuts look like they're part of the paper I just like to make sure that I've got plenty of glue holding all the edges down. So basically I'm just laying these out all over the top of a piece of navy blue coordinating cardstock and this is the trick to create that faux embossed look. 
the background you really should have the background the same color as the die cuts that you're going to place on top and it actually then looks like it potentially <laughs> could have been pushed up from the background you can do this with white you can do it with any color if I did it with a pattern paper I'd make sure that it coordinated with the underlying pattern underneath so that it looked like it flowed through the piece that was actually die cut and sat on top so I simply just cut the edges off the uh, foliage with my scissors by flipping the cardstock over and I wanted to add another little piece to the corner so I just grabbed one of those scrap stray bits and uh, that worked really well so I've popped up the panel on some fun foam and adhered that to the front of a top fold card and then I can just add the sentiment on top okay so we're going to get on to the next tip very soon but first I have a bonus tip for you I want to show you another way to line up fine stamps with their coordinating dies so what I like to do is I can lay the die down so the cutting side is down and then I can simply add my stamp over top of the die with the stamp side down so that has the back of the stamp facing me and I can simply pick that up with a block and voila they should be <laughs> the same <laughs> All right, so this technique, which is tip number four, it's another background technique. And I've got my Big Shot plate here, and I want to make sure that my die and my cardstock are going to fit through when I roll it through my Big Shot. So this cardstock's cut to the same size as the front of my card, and I want to actually stamp over the whole card. So when I line up my dies over top, they need to be able to fit through my machine. Of course, depending on the size of your machine, it might not matter if you've got a larger machine or if you can turn your cardstock on the side, that works as well. So I have the larger image. When I'm stamping out a background panel, I like to start with my larger images because then I can come in with the smaller dies, smaller stamps and fill in some gaps. And I've got the olive ink and I'm using my stamping mat. I think that when you are stamping out with the block like this, the stamping mat just gives it that little bit of forgiveness and you get a better impression. And I try not to rush my stamping. Try not to. <laughs> this is such a pretty set of greens. It's one of my favorites. Seriously, you should have a look at your stamps and the coordinating dies that you've got because I'll bet you have something there that can be made into something similar like this and give that really kind of wow effect people are going to look at your cards and go like how did they do that they're amazing <laughs> okay here's the sandwich for my big shot your machine might be different so check out what machine you've got what layers you should use on this machine it's tab one base plate die with the cutting side up cardstock and then a silicon mat this is the magic if you don't have a silicon mat you can't do this technique then it's simply another plate base plate on top and then roll it through it feels like nothing's happening there is no pressure on this but look at that you can see it as soon as you take it out I don't use my Gemini Junior for this I've tried it it actually does have too much pressure and partially cuts the die through the paper so I find the big shot works much better for me so here I'm just lining up my dies again like you would any other die when you're doing your cutting you just line them up as you normally would I've used some low tack tape to hold them in place tab one base plate die paper silicon mat top plate roll it through like nothing's happening <laughs> seriously <laughs> I thought I'd mucked it up I couldn't feel anything because it's been a little while since I've done this technique but look at that I can already see that it's working and what this does is create a debossed area around your image and I went ahead and actually did this around every image on this panel that I created doesn't that look cool 
Okay, so now we're going to be putting the card together and sharing a final technique. I've got the coordinating stamp and die set, the apothecary labels set, and I'm stamping out the label in some moss ink, which is a darker ink. I was originally going to go for a lighter ink, but decided to use a darker ink instead against the olive green background. I've added a sentiment, which is from the same fragile foliage stamp set, stamp that in black. And that brings me to tip number five, which if you've been here before you've probably already seen this i like this trick it works really well for using coordinating dies and stamps together so i stamp my image first and then i create a template of the die that i want to cut so this is just a scrap piece of cardstock i can lay it over top of my image and i join the pieces of cardstock together and this time I've actually taped them to my plate as well with some low tack tape and then I can actually fit the die in place like a jigsaw puzzle piece I can actually feel that sit within that template within the die cut and then I just add lots of tape because I don't want to have to re-stamp this I know it's got less likely to shift if I add lots of tape and if you have a solid die this is a particularly great way to get your coordinating dies and stamps perfectly placed. All right, so I have die cut a second of the same size label in some white cardstock because I just want to add a little bit of stability to this. So I'm just doubling up the die cut and that way when I pop it up on the front of the card, it's not going to kind of bend, especially as it goes through the mail. And then I've cut a second apothecary label. It's a slightly larger one because I want to mount it on top and have it sort of sitting up. I just added my panel to the front of a top fold card and then added some foam squares behind the die cut labels. I like to use my mat to line things up. But I changed my mind. You never do that, would you? I never do that. <laughs> I think I've done it twice in this video already. I decided to add some of the antique thread, antique gold thread behind my label. So I just eased it away, added some tape on the front of my card and did a little bit of a scroll of the thread and then popped up the label yet again. <laughs> Do you ever change your mind when you're making cards? Along the way? Do they evolve? Mine evolve mostly. <laughs> All the links will be in the description below and don't forget to head to the blog post which will also be linked there. Till next time, bye! Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, subscribe to Altenew's YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching!